oh, hey, Forbes. Oh, you're talking about Star Citizen and Chris? Well, I must pay attention then. What's going on here? It's everything that I already know already? What? Oh, okay, more after these messages. Today's video has been brought to you by the generous patrons of the games who make continued content on the games possible. The games patrons enjoy monthly giveaways like Steam gift cards, Star Citizen packages, and any game that you want giveaways. Please consider donating just $1 if in any way you enjoyed the game's content. Thank you. Yes, a Forbes piece that really didn't produce any new information that I already haven't known. You want an account of what happened with Chris and how he got to the point where he created Star Citizen? Great interview with Bucha. was a private venture capitalist, started before the project basically got off the ground, before crowdfunding, and that's basically how Star Citizen was born. But this Forbes piece telling us basically things that we already knew and things that you didn't know already, go check down in the description. That's what I'm here for. So there are personal areas of concern with this game. We we called them out for their financials when we said, hey, man, what the hell's going on? Then they produce their financials. Do they have to do that? No, they're a private company. They're not public. They're not EA. EA, they list their earnings because people are investing in shares. We know that SIG's having money issues. Again, go down below. We talk about the $46 million that SIG had looked for and Chris needed for future investment. We know that they're having money problems. We know that they need the money. Even, even with the crowdfunding, it's still not enough. You guys want to see where they're at currently? Check out the amount of income that they have made up to this point, how much money they've raised for the game. Check that out in the description below. You want information about financials? This is the channel to do it. I'm always looking at this without any bias. There's two ingredients that people always kind of overlook that are really the mainstay for if this game will come out or not. And that is money and that is time. These are things that Chris has always struggled with. You know, this is where he has to kind of focus on. This is where he has focused on. This is why promises come out and they don't get fulfilled because he's trying to cast a very large net to bring in as much money as he can. He's always been that way. That is the that is the basically uh, intrinsic DNA model of Chris Roberts is he will try and pull in as much money as he can. And why shouldn't he? That is actually his job. Besides creating this game, he is the manager of bringing in the money and paying his people that are creating the game that he envisions and we are putting in the input on the things that we want and the gameplay that we want now if our gameplay is not featured in here then there will be lashback then there will be people who are upset that says hey you know i'm looking to be an industrialist these were promises that were made and the game offers none of that these are also things that can be improved upon these are things that can be in implemented into the game at a later stage nothing is set in stone and that is one thing that people need to look at when they're saying hey this isn't what i wanted there are going to be updates to this game continually. They will always look at it. I can tell by the way that they're very actively saying, here's where we're at with our uh, Inside Star Citizen. Uh, you know, all the very transparent things on YouTube that they're showing us to see, you know, where they're at and they care. They want to make sure that they're giving us a product that we care about. You can see it. They're taking the time to produce things for us that is content for us that no other game really has done because there's so much money wrapped up into this. Nearly 250 at this point in time. Forbes article says 288. Uh, their page says 222. If you add in the 46 million, you're around 270 million. These are things that we already know. We already know everything that uh, this Forbes article tells us. For the true hardcore citizen fans, this Forbes article really did nothing for me because it doesn't give me any information that I already didn't know, but it does slant it in a light where it's like, hey, buyers beware, and it should. It is something that we always have to be cautious about. It's something that needs to be said over and over again, but there's two factors to this game, and I can't say this enough, that people really need to focus on, and that is time and money. How much money are they going to be able to put in? Oh, let's look at the description again. I talk about the financials. I talk about how much income they make. I talk about uh, burn they go through and the expenses. We literally have done this on the channel already. We talk about all of this. We talk about the $46 million in shares that Chris had sold. 10% of the company, I think that's a very rich valuation. I don't think that's 10% of the company. I think that's more probably around 25% of the company and the valuation of the company. I've said this in prior videos, but, but 
the point is, is he actually went out for money for larger chunks of money. We know that they're kind of hurting when it comes to money. Will they eventually become a public co uh, corporation, SIG? I mean, that is something that needs to be talked about as well. Perhaps SIG will become a public company and start sucking in larger portions of money. But when that happens, that time, that time variable then gets pushed on hard and and that's something that i don't think chris wants to do and that is why he sold a tiny little nugget of sig because he said okay okay i do need a lot of money but i don't want to sell a lot of the company now the more that he sells off and shares privately the more that he's going to have to be pushed on this time schedule i think him actually selling the shares was positive for the game because there is an element of private money now in the game and in in this project and they're going to start pushing which is why the roadmap came out about the same time because what ends up happening is they need to please the investors the 46 million dollar investors that came in we talk about that in the description below these are things that we already know i come away from the forbes article disappointed because it really wasn't anything that i didn't already know and most star citizen hardcore fans already know what we have to really focus on is this will this project remain solvent Will there be enough money behind this to create this particular game, even with Chris's insane amount of attention to detail prolonging this? Is this something that everybody can tolerate to the point where money continues to be shoveled in? And there's a point where we hit where the funding was not enough with the backers, where he went out and found the private investor money. Then the next question is, now that we know that, you know, they need outside money, will they continue to pull in that outside money? And if they do, maybe that's not such a bad thing because then time will be pushed on the time schedule will be pushed harder and harder to get this out. It could be a good and bad thing either way you look at it if if that's the case sometimes a lot of the things get pushed out that we really want uh gameplay features those types of things Th this isn't groundbreaking this isn't anything we didn't already know big deal <laughs> the the point is is either you're going to continue to be a fan or you're just going to say i've had enough either way you, you'd go it's it's fine it's fine guys like that's <laughs> it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter at the end of the day you're you're either gonna believe in 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 the game or you're not and whichever side that you're on you just need to know the facts and the facts are time and money time and money it's always been about time and money so for me personally i see that they still have the money and that they're still going to continue forward at this particular point in time. When I see that there's money issues, I'm the first person that pipes up and says, whoa, watch out, we got some problems. Right now, I don't see many problems. I don't see many problems in the future right now with the game. I see that it, things are going according to plan and um you know maybe maybe sig and chris will decide to become public but if they do then they're going to have a lot of uh time issues like a time crunch a huge one and um i think he's going to try to stay away from that as much as possible when you're trying to create something this big uh that's this encompassing you're going to try not to do that as much as possible and you're going to continue to see the ship sales i it's, it's getting a little repetitive the ship sales the ship sales the, sh the ship sales but they're creating the ships now that need to go into squadron 42 you're seeing the defender coming out um you're seeing like ships that will need to be in squadron 42 are going to be released into the pu and uh personally i think we're at a very exciting time of the project and i don't see that this is too big of an issue it's just forbes basically restating the things that we already knew and hey nothing groundbreaking nothing like no, no, no new information you know come on forbes do do a little bit more work do do something a little bit more uh introspective and and be a little bit more detective oriented i want i want some juice Give me some some good stuff, some data, some hard facts on uh, things that I don't know. Because what you what you showed me, boring stuff I already knew. Mm, not a big deal to me. All right, guys. I'm, I'm really happy to be back. <laughs> See you on the next vid.